Hi there and welcome to Money Talks, where we take a look at the rural economy as it affects you in the ag sector. In this edition, international currency wars simmer as the group of 20 finance ministers prepare to meet later this month. That's putting big pressure on developing nations and those depending on commodity prices, including New Zealand, Brazil, India, Russia, Australia, and South Africa, as they watch their currencies rise. And where in the world are they drinking more of our wine? What's New Zealand wool got to do with Starbucks? Coffee and fleece? Go figure. All this and much, much more coming up. But first, over in the U.S., a meat market corn crunch means Americans are forking out top dollar for the priciest beef since the 1980s. And it's all about those surging corn futures that are stopping livestock producers from expanding their herds. Corn futures are at a two-year high, and cattle and breeding hog numbers are way, way down. Here to tell us more is ASB Rural Economist James Shortle. James, you know everything. What's going on over in the U.S. with those corn prices? Yeah, well, the corn prices have been skyrocketing, especially over the past week. Uh, they've probably been lifting over the past few months, but especially over the past week, they've uh, sort of hit their, their uh, intraday trading highs. Uh, main reason for that is the U.S. Department of Agriculture released their latest um, demand and supply estimates last, uh, last week, and uh, that indicated that supply is going to be back. Yields have been hit by some cold and wet weather towards the end of the uh, season there and uh, demand has increased so the so usage has actually increased this year and, and ending stocks are going to be much much lower so I guess people are a little bit concerned about uh, the availability of corn and that's a big big product for the livestock sector in the US. And James if grain prices go up then meat prices go up uh, what's that mean for expansion? Well, its expansion is, uh, has already been coming back over the past couple of years in the in the livestock industry, um, but it's going to look even more difficult with uh, with corn prices. So I guess some of the uh, some of the analysts are expecting with the increase in corn prices, then um, sort of uh, livestock producers, beef producers, were sort of losing money last uh, last week. They were making about forty five dollars per head earlier on in the season. They were uh, they're now losing about seventeen dollars a head. It's just and that's just because of the increase in corn prices. So you know when you're losing money, you're not looking at it. Spending. Now, it's not great over in the U.S. in terms of slower economic growth. Is that going to dampen uh, the desire, if you like, for meat? Well, latest uh, restaurant index um, sort of in gives an indication of what's happening in the in the. Um, in the meat market, I guess, uh, in terms of what's happening with the, with different restaurants and, and drive-in um, fast food, that sort of thing. And it has sort of shown that demand has come back slightly, but it's still really, really weak. Um, and I, I guess uh, demand is still going to remain weak for, for some uh, time to come. But there's sort of a diff few different dynamics that are occurring. Um, hogs have been really high through this year. Beef has been really high. Chicken prices um, have, been, have been low. Um, and, you know, that's, that has a, real, a really big effect on, on beef producers and it has an effect on us here in New Zealand too. And of course we send the U.S. Uh, fast food joints a lot of ground beef, don't we? Uh, uh, what should farmers here be watching out for? Well, I guess farmers here, then, um, when you look at the, the beef that we are exporting, the, their imported beef prices are, are really high at the moment. Um, farmers here, the international prices uh, uh, are looking pretty good. Um, US, US markets are really high, but US producers have also been ex ex exporting a lot more than they have over the past few years. So, um, you know, that's good, that's good news for us here. Um, when you look at some of the other big restaurant chains, you've got like Wendy's, Arby's, and they've indicated to, to their investors over the past few days that they're seeing higher commodity prices. Uh, that's going to have an impact on their margins. Uh, so don't expect to see good, good profits in the year ahead. As opposed to, say, McDonald's, who, um, you know, they've been running pretty well, but they have more chicken in their, um, Correct. In, their, uh, yeah. in their sort of profile. So they're actually looking a little bit better, and they've been able to take advantage of um, slightly lower chicken prices. Now, overall, the American economy continues to stutter along. Uh, latest results on unemployment figures out not good. 95,000 more Americans lost their jobs in September. Yeah, I mean, uh, the employment figures sort of went through a reasonable patch sort of towards the end of last year in the early part of 2010 but the last few months uh, just gets, gets worse and worse. Um, unemployment rate is still at 9.6% but um, you know, you only have to look across the Tasman and see what an economy is doing um, when it's running pretty well. Um, Australian unemployment figures at 5.1 percent. So th that's the sort of the the differences, and and you can you can pick that up in what's happening with some of the currencies too. Why they are doing that when um, you know unemployment rate in, in the U.S. relatively high, going to continue that way uh, for some time to come. Interesting here, the teachers of course continue to uh, take uh, action to get more money out of the government, but the fact is, in the United States, state and local governments are firing 
kindergarten teachers now and a lot of other workers. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, and that's happening all around the world, um, you know, with, uh, with governments sort of trying to take down, um, you know, trying to get their budgets into, in, in control, um, trying to cut costs, then um, that's something that we're seeing all around the world. Uh, so it's something to, something to look out for and, um, you know, I guess in some ways then we're relatively lucky here in New Zealand. The Aussie dollar course is now almost at par with the US dollar. What are you picking? Yeah, I think it's going to go. It's going to get there. Um, it just hasn't quite managed to uh, to break that point just yet, but um, eventually it's going to break through uh, that barrier. Um, you know, there's a couple of things. As I mentioned, the unemployment figures. Um, you know, last week the Reserve Bank of Australia held their cash rate. Um, level and, and that, there was probably a few games being played there in terms of the currency um, just to try and pull it back you know, when you when you look at what's happening in Australia relative to what's happening in the US and they're miles apart um, and that's why the Australian dollar um, is so strong and is going to remain that way for a while. For how's, a while yet. how's the dairy sector uh, trucking along this week James? Well, dairy prices, um, last week's global dairy trade auction um, indicated that things were looking pretty good. Um, I noticed that this week um, Agrifax released their uh, latest prices and they, they've they uh, sort of tracked back in some areas, up in some areas. So, you know, some stability in the market is a good thing. Um, and, you know, looking looking further down the track, then that's going to, I think that's, that could potentially continue and that's going to be uh, some pretty good, pretty good news for payout for farmers this year. Haven't asked you for a while, but I got to ask you, double dip recession, are we looking at it now? Well, I think that risk has emerged more than uh, what it was oh, just, a, thank just, you. <laughs> just a few uh, just a few months ago. Um, you know, even here in New Zealand, then economic growth is really um, you know the la latest confidence figures out last week. Then that showed that um, you know in the third quarter of this year, then um, then we're probably looking at pretty uh, pretty weak economic growth, if if any at all. So um, you know, I'm not suggesting that's going to happen here in New Zealand. Um, overseas, then you know we might just scrape through uh, with really marginal growth. So I'm still not picking a uh, double dip recession, but the risk is there. Thank you. That's a big concession from James, let me tell you. Coming up, an escalating global currency war. What could it mean for the world and for us? We talked to our foreign exchange expert, Derek Rankin, about the fragile state of global finances and the fallout. And is one of New Zealand's best known poultry companies about to go onto the international market for sale? But first, a question in our Farmers Facts and Figures quiz. How much money has Japan earmarked to pump into its struggling economy in the latest round of government stimulus? The answer, right after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Money Talks. Just before the break, we asked you, how much money has Japan earmarked to pump into its struggling economy in the latest round of government stimulus? The answer, $82 billion. On October 22nd, the group of 20 finance ministers will meet amid speculation of a global foreign exchange war. Joining us now is financial advisor and currency expert, Derek Rankin, to talk more about the name of the game, which seems to be competitive devaluation, or how low can you go? What's the mood going to be like around that meeting table for the group of 20? Let's go to Derek. What are you, what are you picking? Tense, I would say. I, I, I very much doubt that they're actually going to be able to reach much agreement at all. The International Monetary Fund, of course, now has just been meeting, and uh, where is that at? 187 members trying to agree over a weekend. Um, you, you know, you work it out. It's actually going to be very difficult, I think, for them to reach agreement. In a nutshell, it seems to me to be this, that a number of countries want to devalue their currencies and boost their exports. Uh, uh, explain it to me how it really works. Well, a lower dollar or a lower currency is actually seen as helpful to exporters. Now, there's a huge debate around whether that's actually true or not, but at the end of the day, different countries want to have a, a lower currency. And China, particularly, has been holding their currency weak, and there's been a lot of angst around that around the world, and the Americans particularly have been very upset about it recently. And so the US dollar is, is actually being used almost as a weapon. James, uh, if they're using it as a weapon, the US dollar, and with all the global currency wars uh, going on, if you like, and I think they've already started, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, what does it mean for our farmers here? What's the danger? Well, I guess the danger is that, um, you know, when we looked at what was happening in the, the height of the recession, then everyone was closing in. Potentially, the, the concern was that everyone was going to close in in terms of trade. If they did this, the same sort of thing in, in terms of the currency, then that could have an effect on, on the global marketplace um, and affect our currency um, if we were to be, to be pushed higher, if, if, if some of the, uh, our global players were to push, uh, push their own currencies down, then, of course, the New Zealand dollar would, would increase. And that could have an impact. But, um, you know, I'd be, uh, uh, I'd be reluctant to say that it's going to happen just yet. 
Okay, uh, Derek, if this does go ahead, uh, if countries continue to push down their currencies, are we looking then at trade wars and, and, and protectionist barriers? Well, I think at the end of the day, what we're going to see is that economies that are actually strengthening, or if you like, doing better relatively to other economies, their currencies are going to strengthen. And the big problem the Americans have is that they're generating something like 1.9 trillion US dollars worth of debt every year. So their currency is going to weaken no matter what happens. And so the world has to get ready for currency strengthening, including the New Zealand dollar. And we've got the added problem that the Australian dollar is very strong. Uh, going back to the American situation, it seems to me when I look at it that there are two opposing uh, views of the world and how you handle your money. That's China and America. Uh, where are they each coming from and, and, and where is the middle ground, Derek? Well, to be fair to both of them, they're actually trying to change. The, the Chinese are actually trying to spend more. But they've had a culture for many, many years of being savers, and so it's really hard to change that. And the Americans, well, gee, they have a culture of actually spending a lot, and they're not savers. And so to get them to turn around and become savers, you need everything to get more expensive in America. And that means a lower dollar. Now, Japan has also uh, stepped in and wants to um, devalue its yen. James, talk to me about that. Yeah, well, they stepped in, uh, what, was maybe a month ago to, uh, to de devalue the yen. They've just sort of drawn a bit of a line in the sand to try and make sure that they, uh, they don't get too high. Uh, probably a couple of factors there that it's, it's, that's happening, Tr trying to stimulate their, uh, their sort of monetary, uh, their monetary policy, as well as um, trying to help their exporters out. So the, the Japanese economy export-led um, and their, their exporters, the, the likes of Toyota, Hondas, they've been moaning that the, that the currency's been too high for too long. Um, and it's really having, a, having an impact on them. So, of, of course, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help them out. Um, the Japanese economy is still looking really weak uh, just over the past week, and they've, they've dropped their interest rate again um, to try and help things out. So. And, and their interest rate is near zero already, isn't it? Yeah, well, they haven't got a lot of room to play with. Um, you know, when you consider what's happening with us in New Zealand, 3% official cash rate, then, uh, then you know, the Japanese are we're at 0.1%, dropping it to 0%, um, so sort of a range between those two. They haven't got a lot of room to play with, so their options are pretty limited, um, the currency being one of those options that they've gone with. Derek, uh, if you would, uh, uh, favour me with your perspective, a snapshot, if you like, of where the global economy is right now. When you look at it, how would you explain it to uh, a six-year-old? Uh, I, I think it's patchy. It's all over the place. And you, you, you read some numbers that are good and you read some numbers that are bad. And so it is very hard to see where it's going in trend terms overall. We like to think that it's actually growing slowly along the baseline. And I think that the jury's still out on whether we're going to have a, a, another, another recession, if you like. There, there are signs that we could have one, but equally there's signs growing that things are getting better. I actually think that the difference really is that the private sector is doing better, but governments are actually not doing better. Governments have got massive debt problems. And that's where you're getting the, the, the conflicting signals.